Let's jump into the Word of God this morning. Amen. Great presentation by the music department. Amen. Were y'all blessed this morning? I said again, were y'all blessed this morning? Amen. Glory to God. If you got your Bibles, let's jump right into uh, to St. John, starting with uh, verse number 26. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. When you get there, shout, I am there. Jumping right into the word of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And we have this morning, we have a, a new person on the keys this morning. Amen. Give a good God bless you. Amen. Come on, God, man. give a good God bless you. Amen. Amen. Brother Moses Rashad Little. I want to make sure I got that name right. Amen. Amen. Excellent keyboard player. Amen. Amen. Well, let's jump right into the Word of God. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for your job. And done, well done. Amen. We're going to jump right into the Word of God. Here we go. Uh, St. John, the chapter 14, verse number uh, 26. Glory to God. I feel still like I'm a little canny sounding just a little bit. Y'all feel that? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Try to give them a minute to work with this sound. Amen. Hallelujah. If they got to singing that powerful song, You're Mighty, come on, give me some mighty volume. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll keep talking. Amen. Till they get it right. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Well, praise God. I've been enjoying the series of teaching. Amen. Y'all like really, yeah. How many really been enjoying the series of teaching? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to jump onto the Word of God. That's, is that better? Just, just a little canny sound, just a little bit. Amen. Give me a little mids and lows. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You might want to give me some highs, too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I like it when I do it just a small sound. I got big sound because I don't want to have to use no more than what I have to use. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We still got a little sound going. Did y'all still feel it? Amen. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to get it right. Amen. Somebody helping back there. Glory to God. We still got that little candy sound. Praise the name of the Lord. Can y'all hear me? Amen. It's a little something, something still. Amen. Well, praise God, I'm going to try teaching, amen. As I'm teaching, you just follow along, amen, because I believe that you will get what God wants you to have in here this morning. In fact, I feel a little echoey now for some strange reason. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He is worthy. Yes. Worthy of the glory. Yes. Worthy of the honor. Yes. Come on, if I couldn't say a word, I'll wave my hand. But because I can say a word, I'm going to wave my hand and still say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is that better? Yes. Much better. Praise the name of Let's jump right into the word of God. Amen. Uh, right in verse number 26 in St. John, the 14th chapter, it says, um, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And I want you to focus on verse number 27. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And then it goes on and says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Now, I want you to jump over to St. John, the, 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 the 16th chapter, verse number 33. And it says, these things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace, that you might have peace. This is Jesus speaking. And he says that in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good courage, be of good cheer. He said, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of what? Good cheer. Good cheer. He says, why? I have overcome the world. I've overcome the world. So what he said is that, you know, I'm giving you peace 
and you're supposed to take this piece, and this piece is supposed to take you for the rest of your life, for the rest of the time that you're in the earth, that you will never allow a circumstance or situation to get you down. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you really can apply that principle and every time you go through trials and tribulation, you can tap over to that peace and no matter what's going on in your life, you still got to calm about you. I believe that God is saying that, you know, Jesus died so that we could have this peace. And as a result of it, we got to be able to activate this peace. That means that, you know, you got to put faith with this to make it work because you just can't say, I got peace. You get what I'm saying? Because just as you say, I got peace, you got many circumstances, situations that you're dealing with. And I don't know about you this morning, but everybody in the room got a circumstance that they're dealing with today. Every person in the room got some, some situation that are, are right now just really uh, right in front of their face, and you got to deal with it. You cannot run from it. You got to stand still and know that God is your deliverer. You got to know that if God did it for Moses, if he did, if he did it for Joshua, if he did it for Esther, he's going to do the very same thing for you. Why? Because God is not a respecter of person, but God is a respecter of your faith. I said again, God is not a respecter of, pers of a person, but he is a respecter of your faith. So that means that your faith has to be ignited. Your faith has to be uh, uh, in a position activated so that the other elements can work that he, that he has already given unto you. I'm just going to go over the word peace. Uh, peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. It takes the meaning of more than just freedom from conflict, but it also means prosperity, health, well-being, and faith in the face of conflict. So that means that if you are facing conflict this morning, you should have shalom. Amen. So is there anybody facing conflict this morning? Everybody should be raising their hand. Amen. Because in this room, if you're a born again believer, you should be at least being uh, irritated and agitated by the enemy with a circumstance or a situation. He would do whatever he can to get you to lose your joy. He'd do whatever he get to, do, to get you to lose your, your peace. Whatever it takes to rob you of what God gave you, that's his job. But your job is to stand on the word of God and know that if God has given you these tools to work with in this earth, you should be winning in every situation. We said that uh, the word peace come from the root, root, root word shalim, shalim, which means uh, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing broken. Wouldn't it be wonderful in your life that it was nothing missing and nothing broken? But that that root word, uh, that root word, it, it develops the the, uh, the the fruit of of peace. That word shalom. That means that you get that wholeness, that you get that calmness in the midst of it all. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where you know all hell was breaking loose? Amen. But all around you, you knew that you know that God was with you. And that God would never leave you, neither would he forsake you. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you got to come to that place of understanding that this peace that we're talking about, it flows like a river. This peace that we're talking about, it, it's a well of a river, rivers of living water that flows up out of you so that you're able to calm your situation. You're able to calm your storms of life. And I don't know about you, if you never had any rain in your life, keep living. You will have some rain. If you ever had any storm, you will have some storms in your life. But just because you have those storms in your life, you got to come to the place of understanding that God has given you peace through his son, Jesus Christ. And because of that, we now have the right to walk in this peace that God has given us. You remember back in the beginning when Adam and Eve first sinned and they turned the leash over to the enemy? Then God had a plan, and that plan was he had to get his son in the earth. He had to get his son, Jesus, in the earth so that we can regain all that was lost. Now, we said over in uh, Isaiah uh, Isaiah the 20, I'm sorry, Isaiah the ninth chapter, the sixth verse, it says, for unto us a child is born. This was Isaiah's prophecy. And he says, and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be wonderful. Yes. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So he said that the Prince of Peace was going to come. 
He said the Prince of Peace was going to come, and, and there were some great things that would happen from the Prince of Peace walking in the earth. Now, over in Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and the reason why I'm not telling you to turn there, because you should know it now, because we've been, we've been through this a couple of Sundays. Amen. It says, surely, in that fourth verse, that he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken mightily of God. But he was wounded for our transgression, Rule bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace. And that word chastisement means that the rebellion, it stopped based on what Jesus did. And the obedience began. So now we're no longer rebelling against God because we're in right relationship with him. But that right relationship came as a result of Jesus dying on the cross. Amen. I said Jesus dying on the cross doing what he was supposed to do. Are y'all with me? So it says, but, but the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And notice it didn't just say the chastisement of his peace, the chastisement of our peace. So that rebellion stopped. Remember you were doing stuff, and you know, way before even when you got here, you know, it was crazy. There was no one to atone for the sins of the people. But then all of a sudden, Jesus, it was prophesied that he would die for our sins. So today, we celebrate communion. And as we celebrate communion, we can now understand that because of the blood, I want to talk to some people who, been, who are really, who are blood washed, amen. I say, because of the blood, the rebellion is over. And now obedience is set in place so that we now can get the rest of the benefits of what Jesus has already done. It goes on and says, the chastise of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are what now? Healed. We, with his stripes, we are healed. So that means that the peace of God comes so that it can uh, hold us down in turbulent situations. The peace of God comes when there is, uh, you know, uh, you know, when 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 all trials and tribulations and tests are at your 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 your, your side. How many have ever been in a situation that you came out of one situation, went into another situation, into another situation, and to another situation? And the first thing you thought of, well, why is this happening to me? Because it's supposed to happen to you, because in this world you're gonna have trials and tribulations. I say, in this world, you're going to have trials and tribulations. But I want you to understand that God gives strength to his people, and he gives them by blessing them with peace. I'm blessed with peace, regardless of what I go through. I am strengthened by the Lord so that I can stand through any turbulent crisis in my life. Now, Psalms number 29 to 11, 11 stands. It says, the Lord will give strength unto his people. Wow. So that means that nobody in the building should be so broke down, bent down, depressed, that you cannot hold your head up and win. Because you should have the power of God, the strength of God on your person, because the word says that the Lord will bless his people with peace. God will bless his people with peace. So no matter how chaotic things are around you, on your job, in your home, come on. It does not matter in your neighborhood, in your city. God will bless his people with peace. So if God will bless his people with peace, then you got to put your name on it. I am a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, I'm going to walk in the peace of God. I said, because I am a child of God, I'm going to walk in the peace of God. Yes. Now, the Lord will bless his people with peace, with wholeness, and shalom. This is saying that the Lord will bless his people. That word bless, it means to empower you to succeed. You have been empowered to succeed, no matter what you feel like this morning. I love summer teachings, amen. Everybody, you know, everybody's all wind down, but you got to wind it up, amen. I said, you got to wind it up in the name of Jesus because if you don't wind it up, the enemy will call, he will sift you where you are and before you know it, you'll be like, well, what is going on right now? See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every time you get this word, that means that you're building your faith for your next victory. Notice what, I didn't say your battle, I said your next victory. 
because you are victorious. I wish I had some victorious people in the room today. I say you are victorious. So I want you to understand that, you know, God has given his people peace. And guess what? He designed this so Jesus would carry out the ultimate plan so that he can give it to you. Notice what the word said in St. John. It says, peace I give you. Peace I leave unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Huh? It says, although you know, I've overcome the world, I've overcome every scenario. All you got to do is walk in in what I've already walked out. All you got to do is walk in what I've already, why well, people say, yeah, yeah, that was Jesus, but I don't know about that. Yes, that was Jesus, and you should be doing everything that Jesus has already done. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalms number 57, stanza number one. We get ready to crank this up, so come on with me, come on with me, come on with me. Glory to God. It says, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. My soul trusted in thee. Come on, anybody in a situation right now that you don't know how you're going to get out of it. All you know is you're just trusting in God. Come on, anybody in a situation, you know, it just, it, it looked like the more you walk this thing out and you're seeing this thing, it seemed like it said you will never, never win. That is a lie, lie, lie from the pit of hell, hell, hell. You got to make up in your mind that you are a winner. You got to make up in your mind that you are more than a conqueror. You got to make up in your mind that you are victorious. And it does not matter what it feels like. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It says, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Wow. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Until, there, until these calamities be overpassed. So in other words, no matter what you are going through, you get under the shadow of the Most High God and you just allow the calamities to pass all over you because long as you're abiding with him, come on now, he's going to protect you. He's going to keep you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to talk with you. He's going to help you succeed. Somebody shout, I need that help in Jesus' name. Psalms number 127, sins are number two. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are y'all there this morning? Somebody shout, I need a little help. Tell your neighbor, come on, wake up in Jesus' name. See, now that it's, 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 now the summer has come. Don't sleep through the summer. Glory to God. I want to look at stanza number, I'm going to start at stanza number one. It says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that buildeth it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. But I want you to focus on number two. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. He gives his beloved sleep. So what he said is that you're not supposed to be up in the middle of the night trying to figure out, I can't sleep, Lord. Come on, y'all, come here. I, okay, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime. So much trouble. I lay awake at night. And that song said, but that's all right. That's wrong because that's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is telling you something. To, it says it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. Let me tell you something. If I am awakened by anything in the middle of the night, you know I'm going to get up and pray. Amen. I'm not going to get up and watch TV. I'm not going to get up and pace the floor. I'm not going to get up and just, you know, get on my cell phone and start looking at Facebook because Facebook don't get trouble out your way. Amen. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That means that you got to ignite yourself with the word of God. Somebody shout, I need to ignite myself with the word of God. How do I ignite myself with the word of God? I got to get the word on my tongue. I got to get the word of God on my tongue, lip, and my vocal cord. I got to begin to speak the word. And let me tell you something. The enemy's job is to get fear on the inside of you. He doesn't care how he do it. You know what? God never slumbers asleep, but the devil, he stays awake just as well. 
And you better believe that, you know, while, you know, we're talking about pulling down strongholds, the enemy would do anything to create a, a vain imagination to rise up, to enter into your thought pattern. Be even careful about what you're dreaming, glory to God. Make sure that if you're seeing things that are not of God, you begin to cast that thing down and pull it down in the name of Jesus. Don't just sit there and say, mm, I had an interesting night, a nightmare. I, I don't want no nightmares. Tell your neighbor, you don't need nightmares. Because a nightmare is a trigger of fear. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I said the nightmares are triggers of fear. And the devil, all he wants to is get you into a place of fear, worry, frustration, and unbelief. And when he gets you over there, he will rob you of the peace that God says that you already have. So you ought to say, I already got peace. I, already got peace. I don't need no worry. I don't need no, worry. I don't need no fear. I don't need no fear. Because God has given me Nothing but peace. Peace be still in my life right now. I cast down every vain imagination and everything that try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I recognize peace has already been given unto me. And because it's been given unto me, I receive it. I receive it. Right now. And I'm just telling you now, you can sit here and you can go through this really passively. It's going to be, you will go through whatever you're going through very passively. You got to learn to wake up your faith. Wake up your faith. Wake up your faith so that you can do what needs to be done to win the way you need to win. Are y'all with me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So glory to God. Go to Romans, the fifth chapter, the first verse. I want to show you this because I want you to see this. What Jesus has already done. Jesus has already done. He died so that we can have rights. He died that we will be uh, operating just the way that he operated. In fact, that we should be greater, doing greater works than what he has already done. He's gone on to the Father. Now he's given us a prime example of what it's supposed to be like, and we're supposed to be winning in every area of our life. Winning in every area of our life. How many know there's going to be rumors of wars? How many know there's going to be, the Bible says all of this stuff is happening right now. How many know that we're living in perilous times? But how many know that the function of all of this is to get you out of your peace mode? The thing to get you into a place of fear, and you don't want to get over into a place of fear, allowing the enemy to come in and create a turbulent moment in your life. Earthquakes, famine, pestilence, and diverse kind of places, all of this is nothing but the beginning of sorrows. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. You can pray, you can say whatever you want to say, but you're going to still see them happening. But at the same token, just because they're happening, it should not shake your faith in God. I said, should not shake your faith in God, regardless what's going on in the media, regardless what's going on with the news, regardless what's going on with the president and everything else. Don't let it rob you of your faith in God. You'll be so busy paying attention to that until you're not putting enough attention to the word of God. And the Bible says, it says, attend to my word. Incline thine ear to thy sayings. You know, don't get me wrong, I know you want to know what's going on, but don't get caught up in the trap. Because it's a trap, it's a trigger point to get you off of what God has already provided unto you. I want you to repent and say, in the name of Jesus, God has already given me the power to win and overcome in every situation. I now have the greater one living big on the inside of me. I now have right relationships with the peace giver who gave his son, the Prince of Peace, to live inside of me. As a result, I have the Holy Ghost and the fruit of the Spirit activated in my life. There's no down days for me. There's nothing but up days right now. And regardless of what's going on in my life, I can shout. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you because
because guess what? You got to learn how to shout in the face of opposition. So listen to this. It says in Romans, the fifth chapter, the first verse, it says, therefore, being justified by faith. Y'all see this? Lucius McDowell will have peace with God. I'm trying to get you in there. I'm trying to get you in there. And and this is the way you got to walk around talking in your household. I have peace with God through through our Lord Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace which we stand. And it says, and rejoice in the hope of rejoice. You know, I, I know, I know you give me, I know you give me your hallelujahs now, but I really need you to hallelujah in your house. I need you to hallelujah in your cars. I need you to hallelujah when you're by yourself, because that's when it's difficult to get that sound out. I, I, I say that's when it becomes difficult to get that sound out when you're all by yourself. So tell your neighbor, come on, let's get it on right now. We're not going to wait till you go home. We're going to get you, we're going to get you rejuvenated right now. We're going to give you a jump start right now. Go ahead and give me some hallelujahs right now. Come on. Okay, okay. It's just like I'm a coach. It's just like I'm a coach. You know, they come in laid out. Okay, give me five laps. Just give me five laps. I don't care what your situation. I don't care if you hurting. You're going to give me five laps before you get on the playing field. And I'm just saying, give me some hallelujahs now. Now, let me tell you something. What you're doing right now, you're helping your neighbor because even if they don't know how to give sound, to what God is asking, you're helping them to say, you got to do it now. Tell your neighbor, you got to do it now. Look at the other side and say, we got to get it going on right now. Say, we don't know what's waiting on you at home. We don't know what's waiting on you on your job. We don't know what's waiting on you in your relationships. But come on, let's rejoice in the Lord anyway. So listen, it says, by whom also we access by faith into the grace in which we stand, we access by faith, by faith, in grace, the empowerment, it gives us the ability to stand through tough times, through rough times, and it goes on and says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory, the manifestation of what God is going to do, not what we're waiting on him to do, but what he is going to do. What he's going to do right now. And I love this. He says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. So look at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, while your head is hanging low, while you got all them frowns on your face, did you see the word of the Lord? It says, but we glory, in tribulation. we glory in tribulation. Wait a minute now. So we glory in tribulations. Glory. That means something. That means that whatever you are going through right now. Uh, you don't hear what I just said. I said, whatever you're going through right now. You lift up those hands and I give you the glory, Lord God. I give you the praise right now, God. I magnify your name right now. I glorify your name right now. Tell your neighbor, it's not based on what you feel like. We walk by faith and not by sight. That means that we don't look at what we're seeing. We just know that God is nigh. God is nigh. Now, come on now, people of God. Come on, people of God. As we walk in the, we can't walk in the flesh because if we walk in the flesh, we'll end up uh, being sensitive to those things. Your seeing factors. Come on, your tasting factors. All of that 
that stuff will be driving you in a total different way. You don't want to be driven that way. Faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing by what? Peace cometh by what? And hearing by what? The more word I get concerning my peace, the more I get built up in my faith. I said, the more I get built up in my faith, and then I can rejoice. Because I know everything is going to be all right. Tell your neighbor, everything is going to be all right. Come on, tell her why. I say, everything is going to be all right. Better yet, get in the face. You're coming out, you're coming out, you're coming out. And just know that just because you're coming out, it doesn't mean that you're not going to go into something new. So you got to learn the lesson where you are right now. Uh, you don't hear what I say. I say you got to learn the lesson where you are right now. In order for me to get up this step, glory to God, I got to be strong in my faith on this level. And regardless of what's going on in my life, I got to praise him regardless on this level. And I believe that when I'm glorifying God on this level, he lifts me higher to the next level. And as I continue to give him glory, honor, and praise, he takes me to another level. And then he takes me to another level. And from one level of glory to another level of glory to another level of glory to another level of glory, I will see the salvation of my God. But if it's only based on what you are seeing, you'll never leave the first level. I say you'll never leave the first level. Go to 2 Corinthians quickly. This is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to understand that you know you're going to have tests. You're going to have trials. That's why you can't uh, live life based on just what you feel. You got to begin to, to exercise your authority. Jesus gave you authority. How many people are born again this morning? Lift up your hands if you're born again. If you're born, look around the room. Lift up your hands if you're born again. That's all right. If you don't lift up his hands, we'll be calling him to the altar. So he'll get them hands lifted up for sure. Amen. You don't sit in this room, glory to God, and go to hell. I'll say it again. You won't sit in this room and go to hell. We will get you where you need to be, glory to God. Come on, shout out. I have authority in every situation of my life. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. I will stand still and see the salvation. See my deliverance. See everything that I need to see by my God. Look at 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse. This is so good. This is so good. This is so good because he says he's already overcome the world. He's already given you everything that you need. You've been empowered right now. So you need to hold your head up. Glory to God. You need to roll them shoulders back. Glory to God. Stop sitting down like you slouch down and you lost your, your best friend. Glory to God. And your dog left and went somewhere and won't come home. Glory to God. You got to act like you got the joy. Somebody said, let that dog run on. Amen. <laughs> hey, shut <shandana. laughs> Woo. As long as you don't come to my house. Glory to God. Amen. You got to act like you are full of it all, even when you are not full of it all. Ah, oh, you didn't hear what I just said. I said, you got you to gotta act like you're full of it all, even when you are not full of it all. That's why when the scripture says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is, come on now, sometimes you don't even feel like raising up your hand. But the word of the Lord says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. That means that you got to conjure up something so that you can get what God wants you to get. So check this out. 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, the 8th verse, it says, we are troubled. It didn't say we had peace. Do y'all see this? And somebody, oh, if I just can only have a little peace. Yeah, well, you can. But within that peace you're going to get, it's going to be some trouble surrounded by 
the peace. You may have a good tranquility garden, but outside of that garden, glory to God, you're going to have trouble on every corner. So God wants you to get some tough skin. God wants you to get to the place where you're not so easily offended and distracted that, you know, it gets you. Am I helping anybody this morning? That it gets you off of your walk in him. Glory to God. So it says we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Wait a minute. I'm troubled on every, every side, yet not what distress means. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> Come on, scholars. Glory to God. Amen. Trouble. Amen. You travel on every side, but yet not distressed. You're not in a zone that you cannot get your bearings. Huh? You ever been in a situation where you was in a place where you just couldn't focus? You couldn't get your attention. But the scripture here says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. You know, some of y'all that don't take one, oh, they said this about me, oh, well, come on. Now, the scripture says that, you know, if you can't endure persecution, uh, you won't be able to get the 100 fold return. Huh? But you say you want the 100 fold return, right? Yeah, you're going to get it, but you got to get some tough skin to get it. Y'all with me? So persecution, it doesn't matter. The bottom line, the word of the Lord says, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Listen to this. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies, in our body, in our body. What Jesus has done manifests itself in me right now, regardless of what is going on in my life. Regardless of what is going on in my life, I shouldn't have to tell you everything. In fact, you shouldn't have to know anything. All you know is that I got the joy of the Lord and the peace of God that's ruling in my life. That's why he said in St. John the 14th, he says, peace I leave you. He said, peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. He said, give I unto you. Then he goes and says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What's troubling your heart this morning? What's troubling you this morning? What's got you to the place where you can't even give a sound of praise? What's got you to the place where you can't even lift up your hands? What's got you to a place where you can't even shout and dance? You know, I remember when we were kids, boy, and my mom they used to play them little songs on the, on, the, on, the, on the stereo, and we would be dancing in the front yard. I mean, we would dance in the front, and there would be no shame at all. And we were Christians, too. I'm talking about it. You put on the James Brown and all that, you know, Funkadella, man, we'd be out there busting. We'd be busting down. And I'm telling you, there was no shame. And I wondered, you know, as I went to football games and, and basketball games, and I see people paint their bodies and, and they do crazy stuff. And I mean, when the music get on, but these people are crazy. They be dancing. They be kissing. They be doing anything. And I'm saying to myself, my goodness, where is the life of the believer? Why is it that when we come into the house of God, we got to sit down on our praise? Why is it that we got to be spectators, you know, knowing that God has been so good to us? And then you take the same believers that come to church when they get out into those venues. Boom, 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 boom. They feel it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, they want to get with it. You know, oh, it's all, you cool then, but you're not cool now. Where is your praise? So that means that you should be able to, yeah, rise up right about now. Amen. <laughs> you should be able to rise up right about now. Now, this is God says, he, he goes on, he says, he says, see to it that you be not troubled. He goes on and says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. What does it mean to be of good cheer? <laughs> to be happy or to have joy? <laughs> I'd rather have joy than be happy. Because happiness is what is 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 not is not forever, huh? But the joy of the Lord is my strength. And have you ever noticed people can say be happy real quick, but when you say, well, what about the joy of the Lord? It's hard for them to pull the joy up because you gotta activate what's on the inside of you. 
So you can't be happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then you can be all again trouble at the same time. But when you got eternal joy, yeah. and when you got eternal peace, yeah. that means this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This peace I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. Nobody but Jesus gave that to me. God sent Jesus. Jesus gave me the peace. Jesus gave me the joy. Jesus gave me everything that I have need of. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you don't shout with me. I can shout by myself. I don't care if you connect with me. I can connect with the peace of God that he's given me. I said, with the peace of God that he's given me, he says, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I, and I, I want you to get this. What does it mean to overcome? It means to conquer. Huh. It means to gain superiority. It means to be victorious. Come on, people of God. Overcomer means to conquer, to overwhelm, to gain the superiority over, to subdue, to rate anything that's trying to get over you lower than you. Notice he differentiates between the world and him. In the world, you're going to have tribulations. Oh, come on. Now, he says, but be of good cheer. Why? Because he has overcome the world. Now, 1 John, the second chapter, the 13th verse, I like this. He says, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. You've overcome the wicked one. Woo, boy. I said, you, it said I've overcome the wicked one. <laughs> Remember 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he who is in me than he that is what? Remember 1 John, the 5th chapter, the 4th verse, it says, but whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Wow. I love this. Amen. Revelation, the 12th chapter, the 11th verse, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And the word, what now? So Jesus says, I've already overcome all anxieties. He says, I've overcome all anxieties and cares. I've overcome all persecutions. And hatred. I've overcome all sin and temptation. I've overcome all spiritual forces. In other words, he's like, look, I spoiled the enemy. Yeah. I made an open show of them. Yeah. And because I've made an open show of them, I have given you the victory that I won back then. Right. I won it back then, but you need to maintain what I won right now. He says, I've overcome sorrow, sickness, and death. You remember when Martha, the death of Lazarus, when he died and, and she, they were upset because he not come when they, when they thought. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. So come on, anybody in me, they will always live and not die. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Now, this is, this is interesting because Jesus, he went on, and when he really went on to the cross, I mean, you remember when he walked through the, through, the, through the walls when the disciples were sitting there waiting and watching, and he just appeared through the wall yes. over in St. John, the 20th chapter. I mean, Thomas was doubting, but you, Thomas was like, I, I need to touch him, but all the rest of them like, somebody just walked through that wall. I don't know how they got through that wall, but they walked through that wall. Can you imagine you sitting in the room and all of a sudden Jesus just walked through this wall? See, y'all would lose all your saintiness and just run up out of here. I'm like, hold up! You've been talking about you want the more of him? He just walked through the wall. But when he walked through the wall, he said, peace, I give you. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He made the announcement after he had gone to the cross, died, resurrected, Walk through a wall and say, peace I give unto you. Man. See, I'm not talking about before he died. 
Because before he died, he said, peace I, I leave, peace I give you. He said, not at the world give, give I, unto you, I give you peace. He said, I, I've overcome in every area. He walked the earth as a mere man. He walked, he healed the sick, he raised the dead. He did all of those things. Miracles, signs and wonders was taking place. He was out on a boat one day with the, with the, with the rest of the guys we talked about it last week. And there was a big storm that rose up on the, on the water. And you know, they were, they were just so frantic and he was in the ship sleep. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He was in the ship asleep. And they woke up, Master, would you care not that we, that we perish? He's like, why are you bothering me? And he spoke then, peace, in the midst of the storm. He did not speak peace after it was over. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? See, we good at getting the after effects after it's all over. Oh, peace be still. You right, peace be still. And let me tell you, if you're doing it that way, guess what? Another storm is coming to try you again. Because you must pass every test that you're in. I said you must pass every test that you are in. There are no retakes here, y'all. You got to get it right. Are y'all hearing me? So he said, peace be still. And all of a sudden, bam, everything got real calm. This happened before he died. He walked the earth as a mere man. Now, the scripture says over in Philippians 4 9, he says, those things that you've seen and heard, do them, and the peace will be with you. I thought about that, and I said, man. So that means that he did this so we can do that. He did this so that, come on, that we can do the same thing that he did. And guess what? He did it in the presence of all witnesses. And guess what? Remember we talked about over in Mark, there were uh, uh, some other little boats that was watching him go through the things that he was going through? Somebody's watching you right now. Huh? Now, you know, with that being said, I want to go back to Acts because something just bust up in me while I was home doing the study. I'm telling you, Paul, he heard about Jesus. Paul, he did what Jesus would do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Paul heard about Jesus. Paul ended up doing the very thing that Jesus did. He spoke to a situation. Huh? Acts 27, chapter. Go to right quickly. We're going to close it right here. Amen. I know my time is going on a little bit. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. That's what you say. Amen. But they don't say that in the back. Amen. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Those things that you've seen and heard, do them, and the peace of God will be with you. Philippians 4 and 9. Philippians 4 and 9. Those things that you have seen and heard, do them, and the peace of God will be with you. So if I know that Jesus has done it, I've seen it, I heard it in the scripture, then I should be doing it just as well. Huh? Yeah. Now you're going to get an opportunity to get it done, but you got to be able to walk through the word of God and make sure that it's going to happen in your life. Remember how Jesus, how he healed the sick, how he raised the dead. I mean, he did all those things, and he still went out there and got on the water and went to sleep, and then they woke him up, and then he began to speak to a storm. Come on, I mean, he made big things little because he continued to do what was necessary. Now, now going back over to, here to, uh, to uh, uh, Acts 27, chapter, glory to God. Remember we talked about he, Paul was in a situation where he had told them, don't go out on this water. Because it's dangerous. Y'all remember that? But anyway, they went out on the water anyway, right? They went on the water, and when they got on the water, all of a sudden, the storm got terrible. It was so bad that the wind blew it to another, another island. So the boat was so battered and beat down that, you know, they were able to repair it. But the Lord had spoke to, uh, he had spoke to, uh, to Paul and told him that, you know, there will be no loss of life. Come on, y'all read the Bible. There will be no what now? But he said, you're going to lose the ship. But you ain't going to lose no life. So it, it, when the storm started really blowing, and it was a really bad storm so bad that they had no control at all. All of a sudden, Paul stood up. I want y'all to see this because I didn't, we didn't get a chance to just really shout on this last week. He said, he says in verse number 24, no, let me go to 23. He says, and I now exhort you to be of good cheer. Be of what now? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? What is Paul saying? Those things that you have seen and heard, do them, and the peace of God will be with you. 
Don't be up here trying, oh, I ain't got to say it like that. Yes, you do. I ain't got to read. Yes, you do. If they did, so do you. If it was good for mama, come on, it's good for you. If it was good for grandma, it's good for you. And it worked back then. It's working right now. The problem is that you got to go back and allow the word to work through you to get the desired results that you're looking for. So he says, he says, and, and I told you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Y'all see this? But that stood me by me this day and the night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee, uh, given all them that sail with thee. God has given all them that sail with thee. So there were prisoners that was with him. There were prisoners that was with him. Notice it. It says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good what? Cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it? We, we must be what? Cast upon a certain island. But when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew, that drew near to some country and sounded it and found it. They found it 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the, out of the stern and wished for the day. And the ship were about to flee out of the ship when they had when they had let down the boat into the sea under colors uh, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurions and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Except these, what? Abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat. Y'all get this? Because what? They knew that there wasn't going to be no loss of life, but they know that the boat was going to go down, right? They knew the boat was going to go down. So it says, he says, and while the day was coming, Paul besought them all to meet, saying, this day is the 14th day that we have tarried and continued fasting and have taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to, to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of it. There shall not be a hair that will fall from the head of you. And when he had, when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave gave thanks to the Lord, to God, in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all good, they were all of good cheer, and they all took some meat. And we were in all the ship, 200, three score, and 16 souls. How many is that? Do your man. 200 and what now? 276 people were looking on and watching Paul. 276 people was looking. And not only were they looking at Paul, but they was looking at the battered storm. They was looking at what the boat was going through. Y'all get what I'm saying? It was a circumstance. I submit unto you. Y'all see this? And when it was day, glory to God, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, uh, a shore, uh, a shore with a, into in which they were minded, if it were possible to thrust into the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and, and hoist up the mainsails to the wind and made, toward, and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran and the ship aground, and the four, and the let me get it right, and and the four part struck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them would, could swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they would that they could swim should. Could, should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on board, some on board, some on board. You know, I don't get this. They didn't have the little, the little what you call those little noodles? They didn't have that. They had a little pool of noodles that you can float on. They didn't have that. They didn't have that. It said some on boards. Whew, geez. Ooh, me. And some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass... They escaped all. Safe to land. Yeah. Now, what am I saying? Philippians 4 and 9. 
Those things that you hear, seen and heard, do it. And the peace of God How many are going through something right now? Would you rather be in the water, on the sea, or standing right now to just practice your faith? You don't want to be on no water. You don't want to be hanging on no boards. You want to be able to practice your faith. So why would you allow yourself to get over into a place where your circumstances and situation quiet you down? I'm, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason because no person in this room is immune to be exempted from circumstance, trials, and tribulations. Just tell your neighbor, say, hey, until you go on to be with the Lord, you're going to either be going in a storm, coming out of a storm, about to begin a new storm. Do you get what the man of God is saying? Either you learn to work the word of God where you are now. Yeah, y'all get anything? This thing is very serious. You need to read the next chapter. I mean, it goes on to talk about, and he went on soon as they got to shore. A snake bit him. A viper bit Paul in the midst of how many people? 200 and 270 people. He just took it up and went to the fire. He did not die of the viper. Now, let me tell you, do not go out into your neighborhood <laughs> saying that you are a snake handler. Because snakes are crawling this time of the year. You better get something to kill them bad boys. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is, in the midst of that audience, Paul didn't say, ouch! Oh, Lord! I'm about to die because this venomous snake just bit me. Paul just threw it on. Huh? Just do me a favor and just toss what's on you off of you right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah I don't get this. Yes, Come on, just toss it off. Yes, so in front of all these folk in here today, just say, just like Paul, I'm just casting it off of me right now. Huh? When peace don't make no sense, I can cast it off. When peace don't make no sense, I can stand in the midst of a storm and say, there will be no loss of life. We may lose the ship, but we ain't losing no life up in here. I dare you to stand up and say, there will be no loss of life up in here. Say, so we, we might lose the ship, but ain't nobody going down. God is good. God is faithful. And he is true to the word that he has spoken. Woo Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No one's moving except for those that are instructed to move as we close this place out this morning. Amen. I want to just go back to lift those hands up right quickly. Hallelujah. Wow. Y'all remember that Christ is my firm foundation? Going back to it again. Love it. Woo! You got it, amen? Christ is my firm foundation. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad for I put my faith in He'll never let me down. He's faithful through generations. 
So why would he fail now? He won't. Glory to God. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. Thank you for doing that. Amen. Because I was trying to figure out what he was doing. I was doing it. He won't. Okay, y'all got it now. He's just being tried out this morning, amen. Christ, Christ is my firm foundation. you lift up your hands right quickly. Amen. We got one there. Amen. Glory to God. Two there. Amen. Three there. Amen. Four there. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you could just make your way to the aisle, to the aisle, just make your way to the aisle. The rest of you, I want you to just pray in the Holy Ghost. So why would he? Come on, come on. Bring on down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He won't fail. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Rain, 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 rain,
just like they're shouting the victory, we need you to shout the victory with them. Open your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. While you're shouting the victory, God is turning your situation around. God is turning your situation around. somebody and shout with them. Nobody let you know and just shout with them. Activate their faith. Their faith needs to be activated. You're on the altar. Fine. I'm gonna make it through. 
Let's pray with you. If you need to become a relationship, no one's moving except for those extra instructed to move. Hallelujah. That's all right. Let her get her up. Amen. See what happens when you stir yourself up. And that should be your mindset when you're by yourself. If you're here this morning, you need to rekindle the relationship, let us pray with you. If you're this morning, you need baptism of the Holy Spirit, glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll pray with you that you can receive it in Jesus' name. If you're here this morning, you need church membership, we want to receive you as our church members. Amen. This will be a great opportunity for you to come and connect with Agape International Ministries. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're still in that mode. Allowing the Holy Spirit to do what needs to be done. Glory to God. Salvation, we come to relationship. Holy Spirit, indwelling and filling. Last but not least, church membership. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anyone? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look to your neighbor. Tell him. So you can make it, you can make it, you can take it, you can take it, God is with you, God is with you, he won't forsake you, he won't forsake you, peace he lays with you, peace he lays with you, peace he's given unto you. Loves you, Pastor Lucia loves you, Pastor Donna loves you, and we love each and every one of you. Amen. You're dismissing Jesus' name. Don't forget Wednesday night.